and let's uh, continue with the other class of the arthropods the so-called class hexapoda or six-legged arthropods there are four subclasses here subclass insecta the most familiar ones the insects and three of them are not so famous so-called subclass protura subclass tizanura and subclass colimbora what is the difference between the insect is these two uh, three uh, subclasses the insect have wings and can fly but all have segmented body and six legs three pair of legs all like the spiders and the scorpions, the arachnids, uh, breathe like uh, these um, little pores, tubes on the surface of their body called the tracheas. The, they are not breathing like us to the mouth and by lungs, they are breathing through tracheas. And these are here the these subclasses. Up at the left and below it, we have two types of culemboas. These are small creatures living uh, very often in the leaf litter, in the woods, among dry grass, and sometimes uh, on the leaves of the bushes. But mainly they are leaf litter dwellers, feeding mainly on decaying organic matter. The next one are the diplurans on the right. There are two main types the two families the campodidae which uh, have do these two large tzertsi at uh, their caudal area uh, they are living in the soil uh, under stones under box and uh, a very large group of cave dwelling species feeding mainly on uh, the tricky parts or plant parts and the other family the apigide here it is written para apigide uh, they, most of them are uh, carnivore species uh, preying on uh, smaller uh, invertebrates. And the last subclass, the Proturans, here is a representative of the genus Acerentulus, a group which is not uh, still well uh, investigated and not well known. This uh, elongated body is characteristic for the Proturas and uh, very small sensory. Uh, uh, organs called pseudoculus, pseudoi. And the subclass insecta. As I said in the previous lecture, their body is divided into three parts, the head, thorax and the abdomen. Thorax can be divided also in three parts, prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax. It's important for you to know that there are two main groups uh, of insects considering their development. One have the so-called full development. They are passing through the larval stage. They have larvae. The larva uh, is have after this a cocoon and from this cocoon the adult insect emerged called imago. And the other uh, way of development is through the stages of nymphs. The nymphs are very similar to the adult insect but they are lacking of wings and uh, not well, they have not well developed genital system. Um, the larvae, contrary, don't uh, look like the imagos. They are very different, sometimes inhabiting and different environments. For example, a larvae of the dragonfly lives into the water and the adult is a flying insect. And there are a lot of orders in the subclass of the insects. The Orthoptera. These are the crickets and the grasshoppers. Also, and the mole crickets. The grasshoppers are two main groups, two main families. Acridide with these short antennas and much more harder body. More soft bodied are the Tetigonidae or 
or uh, this one with uh, very long antennas. The females of Tetigonidae have this specific ovipositor at the end of their body, which is used for laying eggs. Sometimes they dig it into the soil and lay their eggs into the soil. And the crickets, you know them, uh, prefer to be active during night, but not only, of course, living under stones, making holes into the, into the ground, sometimes living and in human houses. Some species are invasive. The mole crickets, one of the common uh, pests is the species Griotalpa griotalpa, which is uh, causing some damage to potatoes and other vegetables growing into, into the soil, like onions and other. The mole crickets. Order Odonata, dragonflies. Two main types of dragonflies and two main uh, larvae of dragonflies. As I said, larvae living into the water and uh, breathing in, uh, uh, as with gills, which are structures at the end of their body, their caudal part. Both the larvae and the adults are predators and feeding on other insects, and the larvae can catch uh, also small fish, tadpoles, and uh, other invertebrates. It's very interesting because they have a special jaw, lower jaw, we can project from their body, out of their body, and uh, it's used uh, to catch prey. It is called mask. So remember that the larvae of the dragonflies has this specifically constructed lower jaw, which can project forwards to catch prey, and it's called mask. The Neuropterans, there's the ant lions, snake flies, lice wings, and mantid flies, which are most familiar to maybe the ant lions and the lice wings. Ant lions have very interesting larvae. The larvae live into the sand, sandy or dusty areas, and make a full and funnel like structure. Uh, it is a hole with steep walls and uh, some small insects, mainly ants, fall into this pit and the larvae begin to throw sand on it. And it falls uh, at the bottom of this trap and is catched by the jaws of the larvae. Also the light wings, the green one with uh, transparent wings, or very often you can meet light wings in your houses on the windows. They prefer to eat um, Uh, small, very small uh, animals, which are pests on the plants. The Dermopterans, they uh, are looking this way, and uh, they don't have larvae. They are passing through uh, the stages of nymphs. They are predators, but feeding on very small prey. Um, their body is very specific with this circus at the end of their body, but they are not dangerous for humans. You can catch them by hand, but be careful. They are um, producing a stinking liquid for protection, but cannot harm you with this circus, even they look uh, very uh, scary. These are the so-called ear wings. Ear wings. The dermopter. Ear wings. And the mantuidae, they, these are the mantids, the praying mantis, again, not passing through larval stages, they are passing through nymphs, stages of nymphs. All are, uh, you know, predators, catching even uh, very large prey. Some are preying and on vertebrates, especially la large species in the tropical areas. And you know, maybe it's um, very specific that uh, during copulation, the female, uh, eating uh, the head part of the male, but it is uh, continuing to copulate and dying after copulation or, or is eaten by the female and the female after laying a few uh, patches of legs also is dying very often uh, the species 
I have a one year cycle of development. The blood we did, these are the cockroaches. They are also passing through stages of different nymphs. But they don't have wire. This is a female specimen with this specific old taken at the end of their body. Some are good flyers, can fly, some uh, cannot fly and disperse in uh, different regions. Some are invasive, like the some of the few housed species of cockroaches, and there are some tropical cockroaches. But a lot of species are just uh, living freely in the nature and living detritic parts or um, dead organic matter. The hemipteras, these are the aphids and the cicadas. The aphids are, for example, one of the main, main prey of the lice wings, which I mentioned in the Neoroptera order. Here you can see the cicadas, which sound maybe you're familiar in the Mediterranean, and the heteropteras, which are a diverse group of, uh, of species. Uh, many of them are predatory, some are mm, sucking for plants, for example, the invasive Nezara veridua, which is damaging uh, the ding green stinging bug, stink bug, sorry, stink bug, uh, damaging the tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, uh, invasive species in Europe, the Nezara veridua, the green stink bug. The Hymenoptera, these are uh, famous with uh, three of their groups, the ants, the bees and the wasps. These are very often social animals living in big colonies, having uh, one female which is producing eggs, which is called queen, and there are some castes which are not reproducing individuals, like in the ants there are workers, which are often females, and soldiers which are for protection of the family. The bees again consisted of workers, a lot of workers, and uh, some fertile males and uh, females, and one queen which uh, produce uh, also eggs. The coleoptera are the beetles, one of the most diverse groups of the insects. You can see here the diversity different families of the um, of the beetles of the coleopteras specific from them is that uh, their upper um, pair of wings their four wings are modified from the so-called elytras elytras these are very hard and are like a shelter like a shell for protection of the soft body of the animal many of them have, have this very hard uh, four-wing structure, but some don't have like the family Staphylinidae. You can see down in the left, the family Staphylinidae, they are looking li li like larvae. So again, the, the beetles develop through larval stage. All of them have a worm-like larvae. Lepidopteras, the butterflies, the most beautiful one from these uh, creatures, uh, these uh, name, their name derived from um, Lepidos, which means scale. Scale because their wings are composed by um, composition of differently colored scales. These are the daily, uh, the group of the daily butterflies, they are called butterflies, two butterflies, and the night butterflies called moths. The moths, they are not so uh, beautiful like the, the butterflies, but a very diverse group, especially in the tropical areas. The dipteras, they have only one pair of wings going through larval stage. Again, you can see here in the larvae. The second pair of, of wings is reduced into two very small uh, pieces, which are called uh, the halteri. So the first pair of wings 
is developed and used for flying. Most of them are good flies. These are the mosquitoes and the flies. Remember, mosquitoes and flies. Not all of the mosquitoes are sucking blood, some are feeding on plants, for example. And the flies have a great diversity of species, like the, the beetles.